In the last video, we saw why do we need create react app and then we ran npm start. If it ran successfully, you will be able to see something like this on your screen on localhost 3000. If you're not able to do that, please feel free to put it in the comment section and I will have a look at it that why is it failing for you. So in this video, let's create our first header component and style it as well. So let's get started. Let's go back into the app.js component. Let me delete everything that is present here and let's start everything from scratch. So basically there are two types of component. First one is class based component and second one is functional component. What we just saw in the app.js was a functional component. Class based components as the name suggests are nothing but the components which are implemented using classes. And a functional component is nothing but a component which is implemented using functions. So let's delete app.css and app.test.js as well. And let's start making the app.js class as from scratch. Or if you want, I can also delete the app.js as well. And let's start everything from scratch. Let's also delete logo.svg since we are not using this logo. And let me structure my app a little bit more. So I like having this structure. Uh, this is not at all necessary, but I prefer having all the components in a, in a subdirectory, which I call components. So all you need to do is create a new folder inside SRC, which will be named components. Inside your components, create a new file, which, is, which will be app.js or you can even name it JSX. JSX extension shows that this is a JSX component or a React component. So all you need to know, do now is follow these three things. First of all, import React from the React library. So this first statement is pretty much clear and self-explanatory. And now once we have that import, let's, let's build our first component. Let's build our a functional component first and then I am going to show you how to build a class based component. So a functional component is nothing but a function which is function app and then we are going to return some HTML from it. Let's say h1 or h1 and this is my functional component. So this is as simple as that. One last thing that we need to do in our component is to export that component. Basically, what app, uh, what we, how do we structure these React files is that we make one separate file for every component and in, in the bottom of that file, we export that component so that it can be imported and used wherever we want in whatever element we want in whatever component we want. So now I am going to export default our app component. And once we have that, we will have to make one more change. I am going to let you figure out what it will, what is going to be that change. But this is going to bring you an error. Let's see why does it result in an error. So it's very, very simple to understand that it's saying that it's failed to compile because dot slash src slash app.js no such file or directory found. So as you might have noticed that in our index.js we are actually importing app. We are importing this app component but we deleted the app component from our src directory and we moved it inside our components directory. So now we need to change this import statement as well. So now we are going to import it from components slash app. But let's make one more refactor. So I generally prefer having one separate folder for each component and inside that component, I inside that component folder, I prefer having the JSX file for that component, the CSS for styling and the .test.js file for the tests of that component. So it's, it's something which I follow. It's completely optional. If you want, you can proceed or otherwise you can leave it to the app.jsx inside the component as well. So let me create a new folder inside app and let me move this app.jsx inside my app directory. So now app is inside this. So now I'll have to again change the path which will be components slash app slash app. And now it should run successfully. Let's have a look at this. In the meanwhile, when it's compiling, let me 
uh, just do one more thing in my dot prettier rc i have turned semi to be false i like having semicolon in at the end of every expression so i will turn it to true so yes i can delete that and once you will notice once i save this file it will automatically show all these semicolons and now it is rendering this is my functional component on the screen so let me open this particular window at the side so that you can side by side see what all things are we building simultaneously and to improve the visibility let me just increase the font size of my visual studio as well so yes now you can see this is my functional component and our app.jsx contains this so this was the first type of component which is basically a functional component as i told you we will be discussing the types of component so yes i will be now telling you what's the second kind of component which is the class based component it's very very simple a functional component is nothing but a function which returns some html and a class based component is nothing but a component which is built using javascript classes so let's try to convert this app functional component into a class based component so let me create a new class if you don't know the syntax it's very very easy you just need to type in the keyword class and then the name of the class which is going to be the app and then it should extend basically it's inheritance which is going here if you might remember in your high school days you must have heard about this oops concept which uh, one of the oops concept is actually inheritance it's actually inheriting react dot component so basically react dot component provides us with a lot of methods which we can use for example life cycle methods for example states and props and so on using the react dot component while extending the react dot component we can make use of all those features which react provides us so yes now we are, what we need to have is we need to have a render method so it's a class it's not a function so we cannot directly directly return the html from inside here it's it's obvious so we have a render method which returns an html so let me cut it cut it and paste it here and let me return this and let me completely delete this functional component and that is it that's 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 just all about class based component there's much more about it of course there are life cycle methods there are state there are props and so on but don't worry we are going to discuss each and everything right now so yes this was a simple conversion between functional component and class based component so i hope that you understand understood the types of components very well in this video and since it's becoming a little long so let's pause this video right now and see you in the next video where we are going to start building our header component from scratch bye bye